Hi, my name's Richard Duffy. I am the SAP Business One product evangelist, and I'm part of the SAP Global Small and Mid-Size Enterprise team. On behalf of SAP and our partners, I'd like to welcome you to today's live demonstration of SAP Business One. In this session, I'm gonna focus on the production capabilities of SAP Business One. We're gonna look at things like the bill of materials, the production orders, and a little bit on the reporting that's available in the production module. So let's dive straight in and have a look at what we've got. So we're now looking at SAP Business One and we're gonna focus on the production capabilities. Now, when we look at SAP Business One, we really think about the production capabilities really being designed for organizations involved in light manufacturing. If you are more involved in a heavier kind of manufacturing, if you are doing process manufacturing, then it may be worth your while to take a look at one of the complementary solutions from one of our software solution partners that adds on to the standard functionality in SAP Business One. And you can find out more about those solutions on our website. But what I'm gonna do is focus on the core functionality that's in the SAP Business One product itself. So I've created a cockpit inside SAP Business One for my production, and I've put my common functions on here that I work with all the time as a production professional. So I've got my bill of materials, my production order, and then of course my bill of materials report. And I can see my open documents down here, my production orders, and I've got 18 of those. Now I've also got my little browser widget here, and I've got access to my uh, information that I've got sitting up on Apex which is the association that's really designed for operations management, manufacturing professionals. If I go across here to my modules and I look at production, you'll see that there's a range of other functions that I can access here, like the receipt from production, issuing products against production and so on, but I'm really gonna focus on the core aspects. So let's just shrink that down again. And let's look at the bill of materials because the bill of materials is the base unit that we work in with the production module. When I'm building a bill of materials, I've really got two main types of bill of materials that I'm working with, either production bill, and a production bill is where I am manufacturing the product. So I'm taking a number of child products, I'm pulling those into a manufacturing process, I'm assembling them and then receiving a finished product into stock. The other options I have are my assembly and my sales bill of materials. And those are bills that I use where they're not actually assembled until the sales process. So if I've got a kit, for example, that might consist of, let's say I'm selling computers, I might have a, a computer, I might have the monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, an operating system, and maybe uh, I might be able to swap out the memory modules in the in the computer, but that decision's made at, at the time of uh, purchasing. So I might then want to use an assembly uh, bill of materials for that because I'm not actually producing the finished product and selling that as a finished item. Whereas maybe, uh, let's say, I might be putting together a keyboard and a mouse kit and I always sell those together. Well, that might be where I might use the production bill of materials because I've got the keyboard, I've got the mouse, I've got the packing materials, I've got the box that is going to be shipped in and I've got some labor. So those things would then go into my, um, my production bill of materials and I would do a production order. So let's look at a couple of examples of um, some of these bills of materials. So here you can see I've got my Lexmark 4029 printer. And you can see what we put in this. We've got two memory chips, paper drawer, printer head, power supply, and a system board. So I'm putting in the quantities that I have, the uh, warehouse that I'm pulling them from, and the issuing method. I'm either back flushing, or I'm manually issuing the product against the, uh, against the production order. A Couple of other things I've got in here. I've also got the base price that I use for the component items and then I'm gonna assemble my cost on the basis of that base price. So I'm gonna get my finished manufacturing cost. So I can add in here my labor component as well if I want. Let's take a look at another example of one of our bills. I'll just cycle through these. So I also have an example here of a sales bill of material. So this is my home PC starter kit. And you can see that um, this is, consists of an IBM InfoPrint 1312 
and uh, a, a standard PC model. And the beauty of this is when I'm placing an order for this particular kind of bill of materials, uh, it will come up, it will be exploded out on the sales order, and then I can, if I want to, I can substitute you know, the, uh, a different printer for that printer, whatever I want. So I can go um, and have as many components on this bill of materials as I like. So that's the fundamental uh, process involved in creating your bill of materials. Now, in your bill of materials, you've got a couple of issue methods. You can either specify your bill of materials to use back flushing or you can manually entry. Now what's the difference? When you're doing back flushing, uh, the product or the child components are removed from stock at the time that the production order is completed. Whereas if you have this set to manual, then you have to manually issue the stock of the child items against the production order. So that's the bill of materials, so let's close that down. So then if I look at a production order, you can see that when I've gone through my planning process and I've determined that I need to produce some product, and by the way, we do that in SAP Business One using the MRP functionality, and you can view that MRP functionality in another one of the demonstrations available from the same location where you're viewing this demonstration. But when I've gone through either the MRP process or I have uh, manually decided to create a production order, I go in, I create my production order and I can do a standard production order, a special order, or I can even disassemble an assembled bill of materials if I want to. What's my status? So I start off right now and my status is planned. I pick my product and again, it's only gonna show me the products that are uh, based on a bill of materials. So I'm going to pick my server point 1000. It's telling me um, you know, the components that are required and then it's asking me, well, how many am I planning to produce? So I'll go ahead and I'll plan to produce five. Where do I want those to be receded into? I want them to be receded into warehouse one. I'm going to say that they are due into my warehouse on the third. So that's when I need them to be out of the production process. Now, I can also link this, if I want to, to a sales order. So I can take this production order and I can link it to one of my sales orders. So that way I can track the two and make sure that when the production is, is completed that I can go in and know that the sales order is ready to release. I can also link it to a customer and I can also pick some distribution rules. And there's another function in SAP Business One that I haven't touched on and that's the ability to create projects. What projects are, projects are a way of putting in a code and then allocating any kind of costs from any transactions in the system, be they sales transactions, be they accounts payable transactions, general ledger transactions, or even production related transactions. Allocate those to that project code and then be able to call up that project and view all of those transactions listed against the project code. So that's what that field is there. And anywhere else you see that project um, mentioned in SAP Business One, that's what it's for. So I put in my components. I have a summary here of what's involved in producing this product. I could put in my remarks, um, must be produced by the due date. And I'll say add. And that's my production order is now in the system. So I can call that up again now. Once it's planned, I can then go ahead and I can release that production order into the production process. So I'm now going to release that and I will update it. So now I produce my production order. And once that's done, by the way, I can go in, I can print out my production order or I can trigger again through the alerting process that there are production orders ready to be done and that then goes through to my production area in my organization. Now what they will do, these are back flushed so we don't need to allocate product against it but uh, if they were manually, ish manually um, issued then I would need to go in and come across here into my modules and I would need to issue for production. So I'd need to issue the child items against that order. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is come in and I'm just gonna do a receipt from production. So I can come in here, choose my production order. There it is, there's the production order that I've created. It's my server point 1000. 
am I rejecting it or am I completing it? Well, I'm going to complete it. So that's all fine. There's my unit price that's been calculated for me. And then I just say add. Now there are serialized, this is a serialized component. So what I need to do is I need to create a serial number for the finished product or I need to record the serial number that was allocated in the manufacturing process. So I'll go there, oh, that's my starting number and I'll say automatic creation and I'll put in a manufacturing date was today. There's no expiration date, warranty start date doesn't kick in until obviously I sell the product. So I'll now create that. It's automatically created my serial numbers. I'll just drop in here and update my manufactured date on that first one as well. Actually, again, I can just put D for today's date. That's now done. And I'll say update. And guess what? I've already got that serial number in stock for that particular product. So something's gone wrong in my manufacturing process. They've allocated an incorrect serial number. And actually, uh, I've got these four items that have all been allocated the same serial number. So now I need to go back to my guys and ask them to correct that. So once they've corrected it, I can come in here and I can change it. Or of course, I could have just gone ahead and done the automatic creation again. And now once I've got those corrected serial numbers, I just choose update, that's all okay. I say okay, and then add. Again, my child items are gonna be removed from stock right now. My finished product's gonna be added into stock, so all the accounting transactions are gonna be done. So I'll say yes to that, and that's now complete. That's our production process. So again, you can see it's designed for quite light manufacturing processes, but for um, organizations who are doing very simple assemblies, very simple production, it's a fantastic solution. Now, sitting underneath all of this, there's a range of reports which you can produce. There's a bill of materials report, there's your open items list, and of course, when you're making, when you're doing your production orders at any time, you can call up a production order and print out a production order report. So that's a quick look at the functionality that's in the production module. If you've got any questions about the production functionality, about what I've shown you, or any of the other demonstrations you've looked at, please just click on the uh, Ask a Question button and we'll be more than happy to come back to you uh, with some answers.